strange is because you yeah. seem the happiest you've ever been. Right. Is that um, true? The uh, happiest I've ever been in L.A., yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The most content. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the most content. Uh, sixth grade was a good year for me, too. Eighth As an grade, adult. Eighth grade was As an adult. Um, you got a good... Eighth grade, it. I won two speech tournaments, all right? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> everybody have you ever watched this show one on one with christian harloff no have you ever listened to it well now you get a chance to because i know you clicked on this because you saw ken knapsack is in town that's right the pit boss people have been asking for this interview for a long time for back when i did the harloff podcast where's ken where's your good buddy ken how come he's not on well he's on and he talks about a lot of things and i know for a long time people were like what the hell happened with ken and collider what what happened well he talks about it and guess what he talks about in depth? I didn't even know he was going to go into it in depth. It's Captain Learning. That's right. We talked about Captain Learning for a long time, and it was great to see his perspective on a lot of different things. He's one of my favorite humans in the entire world. Um, I love Ken. He is honest. He is funny. Uh, he is a good dude. And he just, I think he's very inspirational in this episode. So go ahead and check this out. Listen to it. If you're not listening to it on uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, make sure you subscribe to the feed because you can get this. You can get Mark Riley's Riley Roundtable on this feed. You can get um, a couple other interviews, but you'll see all the interviews with myself and people around this office on this feed, and you can subscribe on YouTube on the podcast channel. This one's on the main channel also, but we switch that up sometimes. I like shoes, and I prefer beef. It's good with meatballs. See ya. This episode of One on One with Christian Harlow is brought to you by Rode Microphones and My Rode Reel. We've been talking about this for a little bit here. It's uh, the world's largest short film competition. Right now, there are over 1,000, 1,000 short films battling to win $1 million worth of prizes, and you can help by voting for your favorite films. There's drama, there's comedy, sci-fi. They're all in there, so head on over to www.myroadreel.com. Don't really need the www. You guys know that. By now, I mean, you've been using the internet long enough, but it's myroadreel.com. You watch some films, you vote now for your favorite. You like movies, you like new things, you like helping people, well, go do it. Hey, everybody, welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff. And, uh, and yet again, I apologize for Tom Dagnino. Um, if uh, you're offended, then that's what was supposed to happen in his mind. For me, I did what I could, but I also am very happy with how much he opened up and everything that he said. I thought he was... Um, it was him. You didn't hold back. And um, I was glad to have him because I was trying to get him on here for a long time. But he's not the guest I've been trying to get for a long time. They weren't available either. Uh, no. The person that I've been trying to get on this show is maybe one of my best friends in the entire world. Uh, someone I have been doing uh, shows and stand-up comedy with and, and, and everything. Geeking out with for years. He is the immortal Ken Napsack. God, I hope that's true. Uh, the, the immortal yeah. part, uh, and uh, do you? Yeah. I don't think you'd want to live forever. No, actually, I'd be ready to go about sixty-eight. <laughs> sixty-eight is sixty-eight. That the, that's a good time for me. Yeah. I don't know. My it depends. My grandfather's ninety-three, ninety-four, and he's still kind of going strong. Yeah. Um, he and my grandmother are both still alive on my dad's side, so I've got some genes there. Um, and I look at him sometimes, and I'm like, he's ready. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I it's, it's funny you say that because I never. I, it's like you get to a place because let's call it what it is. The 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 we rot. That's yeah, what, like, like we're food. slowly we, rotting. We rot. That's what that happened. You look at some older people. I like saw Bob Newhart on. Yeah, uh, and he does. He looks like he's rotting. But <laughs> but but I, I love him. But I mean, he's, he's, he's one of my favorites. He's, yeah, but he's great. But it's, that's what happens to us. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to get to be that old. And then again, I say that, and I have mm -hmm. two kids, and I want to yeah. see their kids, and I want to see everything too. So I don't know. But I also I don't want to ache. Yeah, yeah, and I, I ache now. It's yeah, I ache now, and that's already a thing. And, and even though I try to work some yoga or stretching in, it just it seems, yeah, it just it's inevitable. And it depends on some of your genes. Again, my grandfather's strong. I mean, he's he's Russian. He's uh, Circassian. He's strong yeah. like bull. And, is that what Napsack is? Is it Russian? Uh, Circassian, uh, okay. the White Russians, uh, with the little white 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 Russians from the hills. Okay. Good um, drink, too. Yeah, it is a good drink. Uh, speaking, speaking of, of drink, drinks, I'm kind of thirsty. That. Do you have any water for me? Uh, I don't have any water, mm. but I do have a uh, a oh. tasty LaCroix. Would you like one? I do want to. I've try had it. these, but I want to see it again through All your right, eyes. So what's you, the and flavor you, and you here? you got a Game of Thrones uh, over And they it, don't so. officially sponsor you yet. No, they should, yet. those skunks. They'll get there. They'll uh, get there. This is, a, this is a blackberry cucumber. Blackberry together at last. Okay. Try it. Can I have the extra there? Yeah, of course. Are you holding that for me? No, no, I'll take it. Cheers to Cheers to finally this is finally happening. 
Okay. You liking it? Yeah. Uh, the, the, they're getting more adventurous with the flavors. Yeah. I think the first couple times I had them a couple years ago, because it seems good. I wanted to stop soda a long time ago, right. but I need the bubbles. That's, um, that's, for, that's why I started. And I went to this, and it was like, yeah, it tastes too much like uh, off-kilter water. Yeah. But that's a good flavor. Yeah, I, I like it. That. That's, what, that's what I was doing. So there's a couple ones. But anyway. Yeah. Um, you. Yeah, me. You. And what we're going to mm. do here is we're going to talk about a lot yeah. of things with you, because there's some things I think that people know, and there's... And there's other things that you've covered on, mm-hmm. on other shows, but I'd, I'd like to cover them, off, cover them also because I don't know if the Collider audience maybe knows it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are, again, you're very, you've changed a lot since I've known you. Yeah, I, mean, I hope so, yeah. Well, the, no. the goal is to change and grow, right? True. And I th- yeah. I, I'm saying that in a good way. I think that yeah, no, I, I know you. Yeah. I think there's a lot of I things. I think confidence wise, you've changed tremendously. Yep. I think um, there's things, because I remember still, we met, let's go back on how we met first. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 2003, 2004? I'll be honest, the date, I think it's more towards 2004. I think I may have seen you before. You wouldn't have known me. I don't mean that in a jokey way. You just probably wouldn't have known me. I'd be in the back of the belly room or something like that okay. if I saw you at all. I was aware of you. Um, but I think I want to say 2004 is when I really started doing Rebels of Comedy with TK and right. Franco. And that's where you were one of the one of their favorite sons because, as you should, you were you were a great comic and you were a regular at the comedy store and to get you on the shows meant something. Um, that's where I first started being aware of you. And yeah. I think we really became friends in two thousand late two thousand four five. I was the sh- the show I think that made me say because I always remember you like oh yeah that's the uh, nice the, nice dude nice guy nice guy he's a little odd guy. but he's nice he was, no, I always thought nice yeah. like it was, you were just you know it, it was what, yeah because you were always a good host like there was the, I hosted a lot yeah but there were people who didn't do hosting well at all they'd fuck up your intro <laughs> there's a lot to, of people who don't host well but they wouldn't you and you've always to this day mm. you're prepared and you make sure that you have right, things right. kind of worked out and the day i remember it was at the improv um mm. and there was a birthday show and you gave a woman a shot i almost got banned from the improv right? i know and that was the show that made me love you yeah that was i said this guy's awesome yeah he's out of his mind look at him he just gave he just gave a woman in the front row a shot he's a, he's a lunatic <laughs> i got t- a tongue lashing for that Understandably so. From the managers of the From club, the house, right? uh, yeah. the house manager, who yeah. is a comic as well. They usually are. Yeah. I totally understand it now. At the time, I didn't get it. Li- liability is something I worked with a lot in my other career, so I understand it, especially understand it more. But you can it, take a shot. You can't give. A I shot. can't give a shot. It was yeah. birthday, and it's on my. There's a on my YouTube page. There's something that says like Ken Apps a career 2001 2009. I put a lot of junk on yeah. there. It's really it's not like a reel. It's just bad. Um, but there's some standard, and, and that clip's on there. I give her. I give oh, her the, the shot. You have Chip, the clip. Chip oh, Dornell. Amazing. I taped it, so I got the shot. It's one of my finer moments in stand-up. I, I, it crowd work like crazy. It was great. And I came, went off stage, and I went out to Eddie in the bar. And I go, Eddie, I need like three shots okay. of tequila or two shots of tequila. And, I, and he, you know, Eddie doesn't know. He's like, great, you're hosting the show. Comics getting drunk. And I gave it to her on stage, and she was already hammered. Oh, she was already shit faced. And right. it was a great moment. And yeah. Franco and Connolly and all those people I were like, great. It. I so I came off like yeah. I was a king. Right. And then I think his name was James. I can't remember. And he, did, he was doing his job. He pulls me up. He's like, I need to talk to you. He's like, Did you just give a shot to someone in my audience? And I went, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, don't ever fucking do that again. I should throw you out of here now. And I felt so bad. Right. But at the time, I was like, but but it was funny. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the improv is a business. It's a business, <laughs> yeah. And but I rem- that part I didn't know. I don't think until mm. years later. But yeah, we um we then started doing shows together at the same guy Mark Franco used to do this thing, white boy comedy. Yeah, it was, and and it wasn't. It's a terrible name, but it wasn't. It, the name doesn't hold it up. It doesn't hold, but it also doesn't hold up to what, because there were people. It wasn't there, just no, white people. there were women, yeah. there were white, there were black people, there were Indian people, there were all these people. But but it was, a, it, was a, it was because he ran it in. It was, it, it yeah. was a terrible name. He, and he, he always told me, he was like, this is the name I've always wanted to come. Call it my comedy club, so uh, my comedy show. Uh, so it just was what it, it was. It just was, yeah. was what it was. But that's where we started to become more friendly. We started talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. Star Wars and G.I. Joe. Yeah, G.I. Joe was the new one. Yeah. That was the one that first yeah. I don't even know how that came up, but it, but we would bullshit in the back, and yeah. I think around like, again like 2005, 2006, and then at that point that was when it was the most fun because we were there were so many shows that we were doing. We would do shows at the improv weekly, we, twice a week. Yeah, yeah shit. Well, there was that one time three. he was doing he was doing um, it was like Thursday nights and like uh, Tuesday nights and everything. Yeah. I think he was doing like three days a week at one point. I know it's yeah. Sundays, Sunday. yeah, it's Sundays also. And then the big shows at the improv or Ice House would be on Sundays on too. Sundays and su- yeah, right. Sometimes right. split. Yep. And and so we were you could do anywhere between three or four there. Plus I was going to the comedy store a lot, right, and right, then right. we'd do these other shows. And so we really started hanging out a lot. Yeah. And I got to know you more and more. And then we started playing softball together. That was the thing about. 
that that yeah, crew yeah. that we hung with is that that's why I loved it so much. It mm-hmm, was very mm-hmm. similar to kind of what we do here at Collider now right. at Schmoes. It was that it was that feeling of community that you didn't get a lot in comedy. Not stand up, no. Not stand up, no. And I was I was upset that that went away. It went away mm-hmm. in a scenario we you know I don't want to talk about yeah, yeah. in particular because the guy's not here to defend himself. But like we, it just split up. Yeah, it just didn't work. But you and I always stayed in contact. Yeah. Um, and I would call you. A lot of people don't know this about the schmoes. Mm-hmm, is that mm-hmm. when we were doing Toad Hop, I used to call you all the time. Yeah, the uh, Wednesdays at, at, Love, at Love It. Yeah, when we were doing Toad um, Hop. So I had a yeah. day off. That was my day off. And I'd wake up and I'd turn you guys on and I'd watch you and, and, and uh, sack off, I uh, think, about the time. Right. Well, though, she hadn't officially come on. I was there when you officially asked her, hey, do you mind, you know, we had we were having like a coffee and a fruit snack. Yeah, you know, you came on the first like phase of what we did, like, yeah. where it was just in my, in my house. Yeah, I, was, I think show. I'm the, like, Outside of Katie, I'm one of the first official guests. We you did a Star Wars episode. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I watched the live show, and that's that was a turning point for me because not only was watching what you guys are doing, I I I was like, oh, this podcasting thing can be more like radio than I thought it could because I was I've said several times before, so I don't want to remix it, but I just I was stupidly arrogant and stubborn on this new technology. That a lot kids, of radio guys were. Yeah, a lot. I mean, Stern. Was, I, yeah. I think he still is, but like a lot of those guys, like in the old school thing, was like basically saying, I ah, turn on your on your mm-hmm. computer, and that's not a radio show. And he still, yeah. I, I think he still says it to this day. Yeah, the old school guys. So you you felt that. Way. Oh, and, and you know our friend Tim Powers, who you know very well and, and worked with you he i was just on his podcast and he reminded me he goes oh i because he used to do a show with sax car called uh it was a comics on comics yeah I, I, remember, I remember uh and and it was early days this was about around that time 2005 yeah. 2006 and he's like you got to come on the podcast and i was like i literally said i was like i don't do that it's just people sitting around a room talking that's not a show yeah. and he reminded me that and he's like hey by the way it's just you and me talking in a room on a show so i but i but i watched what you guys do because you could stream live and i was like oh this is different. This is interesting. So right. yeah, then you would call me afterwards and get notes. How, how was yeah. that? How was that? Yeah, yeah, we would talk about it for a while, yeah. and then um, that that whole journey there. And, but like, when mm-hmm. do you remember? Because the schmoes started. It was even it really was just me and Ellis first before we were in schmoes yeah. doing current TV, and that stuff was going around for a mm-hmm. little bit too. And I remember it was kind of like it was it was a joke amongst the comics at one point. Um, but it was also, oh wait, they're paying people to do to go see movies. Also, and everybody wanted to do it because the comedians just wanted to get paid for everything. Yeah, and comedians are a foul bunch, anyways. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, you, you, you know, seven out of because I'd known Ellis as well, known of Ellis, and right. saw him improve as a comic. That story is such uh, a great comic now. But you know, I saw his early Bella Room shows. I was there. I remember right. Fat Ellis. Um, you guys started doing the current TV thing with right. Martini producing that and everything, but also on YouTube, and it was like. What, what's the goal? What's the goal? Right. And it was like, what are you doing? And I know I give you credit. You dug your heels in because a lot of people are like, Christian, what are you doing? You're talking right. about movies on the internet. Where were you at when that when that happened? Where was I? Like, I was thinking, thinking uh, your your I, thought. Process. I had launched a YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel has been around since around that time, but mm-hmm. I wasn't doing anything, and I was putting the weird videos I'd made before of the uh, Tina's burritos and stuff. You you liked? Which I loved. They're and they're intentionally badly produced because that was my skill level yeah. too. Um, but I remember like what's going on. But then you guys took. I did. Uh, what was the Will Ferrell basketball comedy? Oh, um, oh shoot! I remember uh, with, with Andrew Daly. I remember and, the rated uh, R one. That's, uh, yeah, uh, I, can't, I I know exactly what you're talking about. But I, you, yeah, anyway. I did that review for you guys. I didn't yes. do it great because it, it is a skill to talk into a camera. I didn't have it. Well, I might not even have it now, but it, it is a skill to vlog. It's different if it if it if it's different. Uh, it's a different medium. Right. So I, I I did a review. You guys were very kind. You put it up. I didn't feel it was the best, but um, then it was like, oh, okay, something's going on. But again, even again, that's two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Right. And we'd still. It wasn't until you did the live comedy show in two thousand ten, your traditional stand up show, that it was like, oh, this is a thing because that's all we could see. Right. We couldn't see the future. We could just see stage time. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant. And I think that you because you never you never kind of gave me shit about it. You were always. I never gave you shit. No. You but. were always like, well, well, because I think that I think that we also established trust in regards yeah. because I put you in the grasping straws, grasping straws. Pilot, and that was where I saw a. Big people don't give you enough credit to your. I mean, you're you're a really good actor too because that's that Stevie. <laughs> I think I'm horrible, but yeah, you're not though. Yeah, like, Stevie. Well, yeah, that's that's a bigger thing that I want to talk to you too because you yeah. have you have. And, and that's why I think I th- it lo- at least it looks like it's gotten better. But you're you were very self conscious for a long time. Mm-hmm. That's where I wrote the character based off of you, to where you did. Well, there's a quote. There's a quote in, and you can see if you guys watch Grassman Straws and and it's on the channels, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a quote from my character Stevie, the host of the show, where I just go, uh, "Women don't like my face." Yeah. 
I told that to you. Yes. At one point, yes. you put that in the I show. I put it in the show, <laughs> yeah. and that was where you with, like so that confidence. Mm -hmm. you, and you've always had that humor, the self-deprecating humor, and it's. It, yeah, I yeah. think it's come a little. It's a little. Sh and that's. It's. It's part of your thing now. It's not. It is. It's not a shtick in the sense that I'm lying, right. but it's. It's. It's an angle. It is, and, it's but a it's different now because you've had a lady for a long time too. Because you're you're playing, because you're playing off the. Yeah. Oh, I don't really talk but, to women anymore. I don't do this and that. that that's but gone that was now. weird too because we we know and you guys knew for a lot of that time in the early schmoes, I was in a secret relationship. Right. So I couldn't talk about it, and I had to play it up a little bit. And that's why I didn't consciously sit down and say, "I'm going to craft this lonely, sad sack character." Right. But it's I have those real feelings. I still do. We all struggle with inadequacies. I've been uh, depressed and all worked through all that stuff. Been in therapy, so all that was there. It's also my style of humor. It's easy to make me the target, especially nowadays. Sure, the comedy world has changed. Mm -hmm. um, so if you notice the schmoes news over the times turned into more of me mm -hmm. because it, I felt it was safer than to make fun of anyone else or, or have have it misconstrued. Does that hurt you? Does that pain you a little bit, though, too? Because we are in a, we are in a time, mm -hmm. we, you and I talk about this all the time, that it's a sensitive time. There are mm -hmm. fights that are be, being fought for the right reasons. I think sometimes there are fights uh -huh. being wrong just to chuck grenades like, like Saw Guerrero does without really... Yeah, yeah. You, the, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Though? Sometimes, but I think... But does it hurt the comedy? Because I always feel in a comedy club mm -hmm. that there should be no cell phones. It's right. a church, and right. you should be able to say whatever the fuck you want to say. You don't have to laugh at what the right, person right, right. says, but you should be able to explore whatever you want. Comedy, it's, mm -hmm. it's it, so yeah. By hearing you say that, because I understand what you're saying, or you try to, you don't want to, hurt, you don't want to hurt people's feelings, you don't want to yeah. offend people. But isn't that sometimes the point of comedy? It is sometimes the point of comedy, and I think, look, I think comedy should change over time. Obviously, if you go look at some of the humor from the 1920s, we're yeah. not going to want that right, anymore. Right. It's part of a society evolving. But at the same time, comedy should be, uh, you know, what is your truth and everything. And, and, if, and if someone crosses this line, they cross the line. What that line is, I don't know. Right. Um, what that line is, maybe you find out when you cross it, I, I guess. There should, there should be things... It's different, say, on YouTube or Collider Live. You know, I'm looking at a picture of our friend Tom, and we know what Tom does, Dagnino Finstock, he does. Oh, yeah. And maybe sometimes you watch it, sometimes, you know, it's different. But in a comedy club, I think I think it is it is different. And I always say this, and I think it's right, uh, and, and we've, we've talked about it, like, you can say anything you want as a comic uh, in a comedy club. The comedy club then has the right to say, we don't want to bring you back. Absolutely. Absolutely and yeah. Or, hey, we don't want you f drinking uh, or giving our audience tequila. <laughs> right. I had that right to do that. Both can be liabilities. Both can be liabilities. Depending on what it is. It's just... It's a business. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, as far as... I, I think some of the stuff... Yeah. You should, as society changed? Yeah. And it should. But, yeah. Uh, there's sometimes... That's a great example. Saw Guerrera, Star Wars, uh, blowing, blowing children up to defeat the Empire. And Mon Mothman and the Rebels don't agree with that, or the rest of the Rebels, you know? And so it's like, there's different ways to do things. There is, and I think that it's, it's also the, the, I think the burden and the benefit of social media. Mm -hmm. I think that social media uh, at times can be very helpful and mm -hmm. can, whether it's, let's say, kidnapping stuff, right? Yeah. Like someone, like the, the Amber Alerts and things of mm -hmm. that nature, the technology, it, it helps people find loved yeah. ones. It, it, it also exposes people in a mm -hmm. way that I think sometimes is very beneficial, helpful. Yeah. You can't do certain shit like you do. You said some stuff back in the day, you're going to be held accountable. If you yeah, said yeah. something off air on a video somewhere, right, mm -hmm. and it was offensive, like look at the stuff they released with like Nixon, right? They released yeah, yeah. something to Nixon. It wasn't necessarily as, as super offensive. It's things he said about like uh, jo Linda Johnson, right? Right, right, right. And then he never thought, he, didn't, he, he never understood technology right. in the first place. <laughs> yeah. But that stuff now lives and it blasted out there. And here's things that we found that we can now put out there to, to the masses. Yeah. There's certain things like that you should know about these things. There are tapes you should know, like the, the, the Trump stuff about grabbing the pussy, like that yeah. stuff, like, you know, and, it, and, I, and I, that got out there and people saw it and they should have. There's sometimes, though, too, I think it's dangerous yeah. because when you just scream out, sometimes in you could, you could, you could hurt your cause without. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I uh, understand it. And again, we've talked to another place. Nuance, nuance is lost, and everything. But again, things that you just said, things lights have been shown into dark places yeah. before. So there, so we never, we should never throw everything out. You know, uh, either way, I, I do worry about takedown culture, and sometimes you, you you start something, and I I think a lot of people tweet as if there's not lawyers in the world. That's the that's what I'm saying. That's the yeah. problem is that. 
you're hurting your cause because mm-hmm. what you can do is if you if you don't do it in the in the due process, you could you could get right away all these people to say you're done, right, you're, right, done right, you're done, right. you're done, you're done. But then if the lawyers go, well, you did it this way, yeah, so yeah. guess what we get to do now? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the problem. And, and you might start seeing some some of that uh, soon. But overall, is it a great thing? Yeah, absolutely. Use your voice. Yes, uh, that that just means everybody has a voice. <laughs> everyone has <laughs> everyone a voice. Has a I voice. just think that everyone needs to be careful on how they use that voice, and yeah. they should use it loud and strong, mm-hmm. but use it the right way so you don't hurt yourself. Yeah, because. Or, uh, because there are things that have been that should definitely be exposed, and yeah, yeah. you should. Uh, but there's, there's great victories for yes. social justice through through out of it, and I think that should be um, there. But it, it's it's taken away. I don't I don't, I don't want to sound like Eastwood and Grand Torino, and eh, but it's taken away some some way to communicate everything. I don't think right. you can deny that. But you can, does it does the good outweigh the bad? You know, that's what life's about. Yeah. We have got to take it all. And and I, I get a little upset too when some people uh, whether it's like. And I don't use I don't go on Twitter a lot. I use it to promote. I'll, I'll put a stupid joke out there, and right. then I go live my life. Me too. I want to promote. I want to promote uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then I get say, well, you should say this. You should say that. Don't, that's my money. That's right. my money. Right. And let me. And you know, this social media is not the only part of life. I can't stand that particular thing. Mm-hmm. When, like again, I applaud people who get out mm-hmm. there and and speak and mm-hmm. want to and have a particular they, they use their platform to talk about mm-hmm. their political beliefs, whatever they want to do. That is mm-hmm, their mm-hmm. platform to do so. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No one should tell them to or to not. Yeah. When it's like, you should use your voice to do this. Mm-hmm. That's what you should do, mm-hmm. and that's what you could do. Now, I'm not going to take away from the fact that you would like me to say something, mm-hmm. but if I don't want to, if I just want to use my platform to promote other things, that should be my right. Yeah. You shouldn't tell me what I should or shouldn't do. Now, there are certain times that I do mm-hmm. believe that you should speak up for something if you're involved in something, yeah, if you're yeah. around something. And it's like, if it's like, well, where's your opinion on that? Because you're involved in this shit. Yeah. You've got to say something. Then I agree with that. But yeah. when it's not, when you're not necessarily involved in it, you can have your thoughts. and you should, mm-hmm. Because you never know what people are doing behind the scenes. There might yeah. be charities people are involved in or things people want to do. Yeah. It's just a it, tough thing with it, social media. It, it, it's just a part of life not going away, and we still have to navigate it there. Yeah. Has it changed comedy? Yeah, maybe. And maybe that's not a bad thing in all cases. Um, I, I just, you know, it's, it's just tough. It's yeah. tough. There's no right answer. No. And it's funny. Um, I, I, I'm sitting here thinking about if I was talking to you mm-hmm. five or ten years ago, right? Mm-hmm. I believe you'd be in a shirt, like, like a T-shirt. Yeah. I think you'd be, uh, you're, you have been, you've, you've always been a well-dressed person when it comes Two to. times, yeah. But you would show, but you'd show up to you'd show up to the show show in the suits, right? Right. That's coming okay. back from work and everything yeah. too. But now, like it's like the and I know I know how it goes from mm-hmm. being in a relationship. You're you're you you're dressing better. Yeah. You're, you're, you're it's like you seem like well put together. Like a you're better. The confidence does the, does being in a relationship help the confidence and the overall feel? It does if you let it. It does right. if it let it. Because I've I've been in other relationships uh, and I didn't let it influence me in that way. And this is uh, a situation where I'm in a relationship where someone who really understands me more than uh, I care to admit. Right. Um. And and I don't. Why think, is that? Go back to that. Why yeah. Why do you care to admit that? Like why? Like oh, do you try? Do you fight it? Well, but do you have no? Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you have the? You know, has your wife ever said something to you like? Christian, don't do that. And you're like, I don't do that. In your head, you're like, oh, I totally do that. Of course. Yeah, that's that's someone who who. Uh, but you have to allow for that you know, that kind of intimacy, you know. Yeah. And and that's something uh, uh, I've had nothing but great relationships in my past. But this one's uh, changed me in more ways. But also, for instance, just the appearance. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I've gone through different phases of my life where you know it was, the job made me wear the suits. I didn't own a suit until 2005. Is that true? My dad, my dad to this day has never owned a suit. He's a very simple, straightforward, wow, just blue collar kind of guy. I mean, yeah. he was an engineer. Um, I, the definition of blue collar job is is different to me. It's just a he was just a guy that went to work for yeah. thirty five years, and, and that's what you knew, and that's what I knew. And so I was never encouraged. You know, I remember I was in a school play, and we didn't. We I was supposed to be. It was Fred Gailey from Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. We didn't know. I didn't have dress shoes. Uh, I didn't have a jacket, and my mom and dad didn't know what to like. Oh. I, I don't know. We did, gotta, you, did you grow up? In, did you have money? Your parents no. Money? Okay. No, lower lower middle class. I mean, okay. I I never struggled, but looking back, you find some stuff out that oh, some sacrifices they made to not have me not feel it. Right. And I had become close to one of my my uncles who since passed away. I have two uncles out here in L.A. One my mom's brother, one's my dad's brother, and my dad's brother Nick passed away, and, and we were real we close. And and he he in a good way shed some light on well, here's some things that happened, and yeah. and and. Uh, I, w- I didn't know. 
Christmas Day, I didn't. I got I got GI Joe toys. I didn't know what my parents well, I had to go through. Had to go through to right. just make sure, me have sure. a Christmas morning. So, and even if you did know back then, you wouldn't understand the gravity of it yeah, until well, now. Yeah, money yeah. comes on Christmas trees. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but I had a good. So I had a great upbringing, and good parents, and sure. a good uh, good Christian upbringing. That's why I didn't see those R rated movies. Right. Parents still together. Yeah, still together, yeah. yeah. 40, what, I'm 42, so I'm 40, 44 years, yeah, yeah. See, that's the fascinating thing with you yeah. and me here and there, because I was a child of divorce. My parents divorced after like yeah. 10 years of marriage, right? So, And you knew me when, and I would never want to get married. I wanted nothing to do with marriage. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want nothing to do with it. Didn't 2006. Th- yeah, yeah, didn't think it was going to happen ever. Right. And I, I remember listening to an interview. It might have been on your show mm-hmm. on uh, the Knapsack Files with Makuga. Like right. years ago, and you guys had this conversation. Now you're never getting married. I remember exactly where I was. I pulled up. I pulled up. I was going to Ellis's place on, yeah. on Blackburn, right? And I, was, and I pull up, and I hear this part of it, and I go, "Makuga is full of shit." Yeah. Because Makuga reminds me of me, and I yeah. go, "Makuga will get married." I remember saying that that day. Yeah. I said, "Makuga's going to get married. He's just going to find the right girl." And there we go. Yeah, I would love to. I know what interview you're talking about. Yeah, now it's very he, early on in the Knapsack Files. Because again, he came. He comes from. A family, parents still together. John and Deb, right? Still together, and to me, I thought, hey, yeah, that's what he comes from. Like it's the ch- it's the children of divorce. Sometimes they're just like, no, no, thanks. Yeah, Seen yeah. it before. See how this ends. Sure. It ain't pretty. You don't come from that, yeah, right. And you still are you still under the uh, the marriage thing? I don't know, or the I'm still under the I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. in the sense that it's I'm not opposed to anything. I, I don't want. See, that's different. That that's changed. Yeah. Well, what what what's what you were always not getting married, well, not having kids. Correct. Correct. Um, but prior to that, I was. I can't wait to get married, and I have a list of names I want to name my children in my wallet. You know what I mean? That when was did that before, change? That was before you met me. Okay. Um, 2002, 2003. Why did that change? Um, I, I had a big heartbreak situation, mostly myself, uh, causing some problems. Uh, nice guy syndrome run mm-hmm. amok. But um, uh, I just – it was the first time I realized that I don't have to, and so maybe I'm okay. Um, it's not necessarily – Get married or not, but you also have to. There's a there's a level of mental health. I think if if you completely don't want to get married, that's fine. I'm not saying you're. I want people misconstrue that, but there's something to be about open to the intimacy of it. Mm-hmm. Whether or not it's marriage or not, and you need that term with the legal papers. The ultimate commitment. It's the ultimate commitment. It's the ultimate commitment. And it changes everything, and yeah. it's not always fun and all this kind of stuff. So maybe sometimes I'm afraid of that, and have been over the last few years. But mm-hmm. also, I I've learned more about myself. I know that I like to be alone. I'm a solitary person. Me and Mark Ellis talk about it all the time. Right. We love hotel life. I'd love to just spend four days in a hotel by myself. It yeah. doesn't mean I don't enjoy going with another person and all that kind of stuff and experiencing that. Um, I, but that's like my father, too. I mean, they're still married, but, you know, he, he has a job and I retire and he drives cars. Yeah. And he goes, gets a car from a dealer in our hometown and then drives it up to north of San Francisco, picks up a car, drives it back to another dealer. Okay. 12 hours on the road by himself, and he loves it. And I could do that, too. What's he listening to, like music or sports or something? No, he's not a sports fan. Uh, probably some music, and and, and that's probably... And that's it. And just talks to himself. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well, Which was what I would do, too. Me, too. Yeah. Um, a lot of, we, we, Roxy and so, I talked about that on uh, on Collider Live. Where, uh, thanks for being on the show, by the way. But we, um, we Look, all right, all right, look. <laughs> look, look, look people ask all the time. People ask all the time. And I feel bad because then you get a lot of crap. Because I see people like, oh, why didn't they invite Ken? I get invited every day. I have been invited every day. To the first show. To the first show. Um, I was offered to do the news. You said it. Do you want to do the news? I said, I, I don't want to do it. There, and it's nothing negative from that. For you guys, just, I don't want to do it anymore. I, 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 I move past that. Think of me if I'm like, hey, Dennis Miller on Saturday Night Live, right. I've, I've left SNL and I'll come back. Right. Someone else can do Weekend Update. Um, I'll be on the show. I'm going to be on the show. I, life is busy. Yeah. Uh, it's a 10 a.m. show. Sometimes not, I'm not up. I've been unemployed since January, so I might right. have a new sleep schedule. Um, I also think there's something about you guys are doing something good and and let it let it let you guys do your thing versus just me showing up and doing my shtick. But I'll be on. And I but 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 so it's not negative. And, and we have this you know Snelling Williams. God bless you. Probably writing some tell-all book. Uh, well, I love those guys. Yeah, yeah. They, oh. they, they, yeah it's true. They, yeah. They've, they've done a lot of good yeah. work for us. Yeah. Uh, there's no conspiracy theory. There's no, no nothing. Uh, I'll be on it when the time time's right for me. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, as far as doing your shtick, that yeah. that that is what I'll I'll take that away because this is this is who I want on Clara Live. Right. Okay. This guy. 
Um, yeah. And anyway, but I want to go back to some sure, of the sure. stuff that you were talking Mar- about, yeah, too. The marriage, first, love, well, then well, marriage. Yeah, well, there's so much I can dive into. The first thing I'm going to yeah. dive into, I want to talk about your pops. Because yeah. it seems like, because I don't know if we've ever talked about this, uh-huh. really. I mean, I know how much you love your mom and your dad. And everything. You have one, you have a sister? I have a sister, yeah. Your sister. So your mom and your dad, who were you closer to? I feel like your dad was kind of like your idol. Um, I, I'd say I'm closer to my mother okay. in the sense she's more communicative. My dad and I are, are clones. You know, you okay. know, as you get older, you yeah. realize you not only are like you walk like them. You know, I look yeah. at my grandfather and I go, oh, he shuffles like my dad. My dad shuffles like him. Oh, I shuffle like them. Uh, genes are strong. So we're close. I love and respect a hardworking man who just like it was an artist. He could have probably gone into 2D animation. He, he maybe didn't have the drive that I thought mm. he could have, and I've learned from that. Yoda says, fa- you know, greatest teacher failure is. I, I've looked at some of the things my dad didn't do and gone, oh, I don't want to do that. Mm. I want to I want to succeed in, in this area. I've, I believe I have skills and talent. But I don't take his hard work. He's provided for his family. That was, you know, the way you did it and, and still the way you do it. So, yeah, but we be, we don't talk much because we don't know how to – we both are silent, solitary people. But when it, but you can't. That's the thing. What I've always noticed with you mm-hmm. is that when you, you're very similar to my dad. Is where my dad is not someone that's going to offer up how he's feeling mm-hmm. or how it's all. But if you approach him about it, he'll talk. He won't shut yeah. down. Like I've had conversations with him, like, hey, let's talk about this, and we'll talk for hours. Yeah, and yeah. we'll go, we'll get into. It. And you've always been like that. You've always been that person that's been able. You don't just shut down and steer it to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know about that in relationships, but I'm talking about me as your friend. If we had something to talk about, you'll sit there and talk about it. Yeah, but I also keep things in, and I've learned a lot in the last three years. I've learned a lot through my failures, and yeah. I have I've had some failures. I've had some failures at Screen Junkies. I've had some failures at Collider where I've learned I am more the problem than I care to admit. Right? And, and I think that's the thing people want to learn. So how so? Give me an example. I am tough to work with. I am tough because I'm very solitary and I don't like being told what to do. Right. I was a boss for 12 years. At times a great boss. At times, like every boss, people hated me. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, I've had to fire hundreds of people. Um, so I struggled a little bit out of transitioning to this I finally got out of my day job, right? And we look down on day jobs, you know, um, you know, which we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got out of it, and then I got into a situation where I, I think I could always solve problems a little better if I was more communicative, and I don't. And you know that because yeah. you and I have had those conversations where you know me enough to be like, hey, I know there's a problem going on, and I'll be like like a teenager. I don't know. Right. And you have to pull it out of me. That's something I have to learn to do better. I always That's what I meant, though. I, yeah. so I always had to like say, if oh, you, let's, let's Once go, we talk about it, we talk about it. That's what I mean. It. Let's go Let's go talk about it, because let's let's just dive into that, too. Yeah. Because I think that's been questions that people have been wondering sure. for a while with, um, like, Collider, right? Yeah. Because what everyone knows how much you're valued here. Everyone knows yeah. how much like things right away. The second you left, you came, I think two days later, you, yeah, you were yeah. on Jedi council and Schmodown down and everything yeah. too. And, um, that all, because the scenario itself was you were over at screen junkies. Right. Um, I have no full time. Yeah. Yeah. I have no qualms with saying this. I, mm. I wanted to steal you away from the second I put you over there in the first place. <laughs> and, um, and I maneuvered every which way and yeah. moved every couch and everything I could to get you over here. And, and yeah. it happened and yeah. we were talking about it and we were kind of making those moves for a bit. And, and, and with awesome tactic that was going on, right. we got you over here and you were the, the head writer. And yeah. the truth be told, you didn't even like to write that much, right? Uh, no. And I, I'm writing a little bit more now. Again, I am a writer, but mostly writers, I hate it. Um, yeah, what, what, what had happened when I, I – this is the growth process to, wor- pro- process to where I am now. Um, I never was lied to at the other job when I was hired. I knew what I was hired for. Right. I was a producer type of role. Occasionally you get on a microphone, right? I, I feel my strengths are hosting. I feel my, so feel my strengths are broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, writing occasionally uh, can be funny. I, I've done sketch. I've done the Groundlings program, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I got over there, I slowly started getting more miserable when I realized, like, I wasn't even looked at as a host. Right. I had a fight to even host uh, the Game of Thrones show. Um, yeah, they didn't use you on stuff uh, yeah, over there. Yeah. And that, well, that bothered me, too, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And so little little resentment sits in. But, but I never – this is where I think I was part of the problem – no one ever said, we're going to hire you as a host. By the way, can you just be a producer? It was the other way around. Right. So the, there was a moment at Screen Junkie Central 2016, 15, yeah, I don't know when it was, right. 16. Uh, I produced, along with uh, uh, Amber Shear, James Anderson, some of the people, 
Joanne Guillory, my supervising producer, we all produced, and a whole team, Parker, uh, uh, Adam Halafik, all these people, yeah. David Pakman, a oh, whole team. The, that screen, first screen, screen Junkie Central was a, a workforce. JT produced uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at the technical Engineer. board. Yeah. yeah. 18 live shows in two and a half days. That's crazy. Fried our brains. That's crazy. Fr- I, had I remember a, that. I remember you guys. Yeah, were, you were, I had yeah, two days before. I, had, I was in the Screen Junkie Studios. Comic-Con, right? Comic-Con. Yeah. We we're leaving on a Wednesday morning. Tuesday, I sat down in the studio, that movie fights couch that they have there yeah. and everything, and I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah, I laid down. It was a stress attack. It was it was all of us. All of us worked. Our, I remember you, yeah. you guys. Were, you guys were, and then it was that hotel gaff. Uh, it was a hotel yeah. gaff. Uh, you took the train down, and everyone worked. So not just Ken Napsack that worked hard. Everyone worked hard. Yeah. Um, in the middle of it, I'm watching one of these 18, and a, 18 shows I produced in, in the booth with JT, and I'm like, I'm not on that stage once. And not even being there was a point they said, you know, we need to find a crowd, per, someone to warm up the crowd. That's insane. And they're man. looking around, they're like, ah, if we had like a host, like a comedian type host st- type. I remember you telling me this. And yeah, I'm yeah. sitting in the room like, I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah. Like, okay. And the, the fact that they, I could have raised my hand and said, what about me? But I was producing and that was my job. That was the moment I realized that I, I need to find myself in another direction. Right. So that happened. Uh, and then it's just been a matter of, finding what I want to do in the digital media world and just being more what I want to do more myself and also getting back to being more creative I am doing more writing because after a while and it's nothing no disrespect anything in Collider um, when I'm sitting there doing trailer reactions Shoot me! Yeah, you were, you were getting bored. Yeah. I think I think that's what a lot of people don't realize though. Too, is yeah. there were, there were things that you were doing over here that I and I was trying to give you a bunch of stuff that I was hoping to get you yeah, kind yeah, of ex- yeah. excited about, and you just you weren't. I think that and tell me if I'm wrong here, but I mm-hmm. think that a lot of times, like you said, because the problem was here mm-hmm. was not getting you on camera because I gave you and, no, and you, Mark gave you everything yeah. that you that you wanted to be on. You were on. Yep. That, that's not it. But I think and. I think we all, especially comedians and as performers, mm-hmm. we all see ourselves where we want to be and mm-hmm. feel what we should be doing. And if we're not doing that, it's like, well, this is this, yeah. And that could be great, and that could also hurt us. Yeah, I feel like they did both for you. So what ended up happening is at some point, you know, I famously hated my day job, the director of security at a mall, and it was dangerous and yeah. it was boring and it's a butt of everyone's joke and everything. That was horrible, and it destroyed my psyche. I was suicidal, I was depressed, all stuff. It got to a point where doing a trailer reaction was no different than that. Really? Yeah. And people will say, well, you know, yeah, yeah, why aren't you happy? It's like, I, I almost want to go back because at least over there I had no one telling me what to do other than my vice president right. who came by once every six weeks. That goes back to so you didn't you didn't like ha- you don't like having a boss. I don't like having a boss. And yeah. it's no disrespect. I don't mean disrespect to you, yeah. to, uh, you know, for anyone, anyone. It's just it's uh, so I have learned. I have learned. I have to be better working, being working for people or working with people. Yeah. And 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 that's my fault. Um, and it's not anything that anything was said done wrong it's just i have opinions on how to be a boss number one but two just like let me let me let me work just let me do my thing right and uh at screen because i used to go to the office i had a desk i had an office i'd grab put my bag down uh i had a fridge in there that roca now bought for me and i put something in there and i grab my laptop and notepad and i'd go into the dark movie fight set and i'd work there for eight hours by myself right jt would show up and jt is the greatest guy in the world yeah. and i love him and you can just talk about anything with him and he'd do his work i do my work here i had couldn't find that spot right but i don't even say that's right but i'm just you know what i mean so i just I felt well, because it was a different thing is where it's like you were you were starting you were in charge of the writers yeah you're supposed to come up with this do that then then yeah it was more like we want you to just part of the team here and being be yeah, available I'm, I'm, and so I'm, I'm, I'm learning i'm i should be a better team player yeah, you like to be locked in a Cage sometimes by yourself. My dad drives twelve hours by himself. Yeah. That's where I like That's to go. That's what we wanted to do. And yeah. uh, love, I'm so proud of a lot of the things we put together for Awesome Tacular. Jeremy Johns uh, was already a friend. I have so much more respect for him for yeah. what he did and what he tried to do. He kept me afloat. His his decision to take this show was the reason I had the job. There's right. no other way to say that. Right. And I, I when I when I left, I, I thanked him, you know, uh, in a private message and. and um, Loved what it did, the the the, the La La Land sketch, all that stuff. I love that sketch. But then what? I'll tell you what. That that f- we we you swearing, here, yeah, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that fucking no, the fucking Captain Learning thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, broke, yeah. Broke my spirit. Broke your heart, right? Broke so, my spirit. Tell, take me through that whole thing because I don't think people because it it was one of the most divisive things we've ever done in this channel. And take me, take me yeah, through. There's the whole a thing. lot, of, and I've ta- yeah, I'll really go into go, it. Go I'll, for it. I'll go to like go, I've never go, done go, before. Go. So we were trying to come up with things and bits and what can we do with Collider and and we know Movie Talk is our prime thing but what else can we do we have all these creative people we knew you know you never know with the digital media awesome tech there verizon go 90 was just handing out money like it's a werther's original at a retirement home like what, what are we gonna do <laughs> and and we're taking it and things were good but we know you never know you know i knew from working on screen junkies plus that that was a struggle and maybe it shouldn't have been so we're creative people man right and and at some point i i know we were doing a lot of the the like the 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 the, learn, the teaching videos, you know. Here's the history of Gandalf. Right, right. And those are great. I watch a lot of them. That's how crash, I the crash course stuff, right? Yeah, crash course. That's how I became a fan of Alex Damon Star Wars Explained because right. I'd go watch his stuff, and I I do love those videos. I found I didn't like creating them. I love parody. I do love parody. Yeah, you can make fun of us all you want. It's it's sometimes what the fans do. Uh, uh, you know, this industry is white. Every industry is ripe for parody. That's why I wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. That's the whole goal. I think I turned around to Makuga and Riley, and I was like, I want to do a fake one because I like doing fake things. I liked uh, my Grand Canyon travel video, which I made in 2007 on location in Grand Canyon. My girlfriend at the time shot it. I remember that. Yeah, it's yeah. And I'm giving it's stupid. Chip, right? Uh, well, Chip, Chip Dornell and I went up to Pismo Beach, and we shot one of my hometown there. Okay. Little three-and-a-half-minute travel vlogs. I would loved. I would love to do that as a series. Yeah. But I got – and I gave her on stupid fake facts. I was like, it took Native Americans four-and-a-half months of digging uh, you know, to build the Grand Canyon. And it's stupid, and it's yeah. it's Stephen Colbert and Steve Martin do a version of themselves. Colbert, especially on Comedy Central, was a character. Mm-hmm. Steve Martin, when he goes on SNL, plays the pompous celebrity yeah. who's, I'm Steve Martin, but he's a bumbling fool. That's kind of a character I like to do. So at some point I was like, and I'm not saying I came up with this idea, to be clear, but this is how writer's room works. It's like, I'd like to do a fake one. I don't know. And we back when Makuga's like, oh, that's great. And I was like, we call it, like, all these people have these, uh, you know, uh, Star Wars Explain, which I love, Alex, but like, let's call it Captain Learning or something like that. And then, oh, that was great. Makuga, boom, writes the draft of the uh, the Logan one. Right. Uh, everything you need to know about Logan or whatever it was. Comes back with the draft, and we're dying in the writer's room. And he does that voice. And I was like, you got to have, you know, you got to have, like, the voice, you know. Some people do the YouTube, they're not the best broadcasters. And hold that thought yeah. because it's funny you said that because I was there was this video yesterday and it's like the most ten top ten terrifying things ever caught on camera right, right. and I'm watching <laughs> I watched those did you see, and I'm watching and there's this one with this tractor trailer with this guy does this daring thing and he and he this, everything's on fire and he does this thing he gets too close but the guy narrating on yeah. this channel is like and it was amazing because <laughs> yes. the reason why they were able to save. So yeah. many lives was, and I'm like, how? This is crazy. And there's yes. so many videos like and, that with those monotone voices, and they get 12 million views. Right. And God bless them. God bless them. But out of that, it was like, what can we do to poke fun of that? What can we do to do our version of right. it? And I say poke fun, but it was just like, let's do our funny version. It's it's stupid comedy, but it's smart comedy because we're making references. You know, you know, I love references. So McCougan nails this thing. We. I think maybe put a sprinkle of a note in here. Yeah. I took out a comma. like, And we record it on my gear. I brought in my gear in the office, and we wanted to pitch it to you guys. I think we talked to you. We pitched it to everyone. Everyone goes, this is great. Uh, everyone. Uh, and Fernandez loved it. Fernandez yeah. loved it. Uh, the other people loved it. Um, uh, we were like, well, let's do two more. Let's create other characters. Riley, you've got a character. What is I forget it, Mage or something. I was, right. you right, know, right. whatever it was. Uh, and uh, my my character had the truth bombs, that was and, my and I was, I'm gonna drop truth bombs. <laughs> I love the truth bombs. And so I wrote one about King Arthur, because yeah. which we knew wasn't gonna be a popular movie, but it was like how, how I would love to get the King Arthur legend really wrong. Yeah. Um, so we wrote those, uh, recorded them, and they were supposed to be intention. The video was supposed to be bad too. Yeah. So it's to be like clip art and just Google images, and then Frank, the genius editor here, Frank Lucator. Yeah. Um, Cotuardo. Yeah, he, whatever. Um, <laughs> Frank Zappa. He does look like Frank uh, Zappa. He's a rock star. Yeah, um, he, he gets a hold of him. Yeah. He's a genius. He makes these funny things. We're like, this is awesome. Now, did I think at any point they're going to do 12 million views? No, but it was something different. We ran it up to the chain to the top. Mark Echo, the creator of all of this, goes, this is awesome. And this is a guy who creates fashion and right. influence, right? So 
So you're riding high at that We're point. riding high. Yeah. Thinking again, not thinking that we've just launched our honest trailers no. or anything like that. But it could be like, something fun. And it's like you, you're proud of it. You're happy. We're, everyone in the office is cracking up, loving it. Loving it. it we're, everybody's anticipating the drop of this thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is some of the best, like, one of my favorite things. My particular script, the King Arthur one, is one of my favorite things I've ever written. Riley's killing it and everything. I have to go to Vegas. I go every year for this thing called Cauliflower Alley Club, a member of an alumni, pro wrestling alumni association. We go out there and blah, blah, blah. Go with my friend Paul. You've met Paul. Yeah, yeah. Cop and wrestler and everything. He was going through some tough times. And we we're, so we, he and his wife, his wife and her friend went somewhere else. And then we were at this place called Container Park in Las Vegas. It's an outdoor mall. It's built on old, tra- uh, you know, big truck, uh, shipyard container mm-hmm. type stuff. A lot of people know where Container Park is. And we're out there at like two o'clock. I think it drops right at two o'clock. And PM. look, PM or yeah. something. I, I, could we have an, l- announced a little better? Yeah, whatever. To, you know, we didn't have a social media team like other places did. But whatever. doesn't matter. We decided to drop all three because we wanted a rotating circle. Yeah. If you like this one, watch this next one. We originally thought maybe we'd do a week or every two weeks. Right. But let's just put them all out there because we're going to write more. These take an hour to write because they're just coming from our heart. And he, my friend <laughs> is talking to me with some of the darkest, depressed <laughs> At the right. times, he was a sex crimes detective, which is the most depressed he's ever been in his career as a police officer. He's a sergeant now. I mean, the stuff that goes on in the walls of your city, you can't even imagine. Um, and he's telling me this stuff and everything. And I'm looking down at my phone, and I just see, like, <laughs> these mentions are going off. In the back of my head, I go, oh, Captain Learning dropped. So there's a lull in the conversation, and all of a sudden I get a text. I don't know. Riley, Makuga, can't even remember. Someone's like, oh, this ain't good. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I, so I bring up one of the videos, and I think it was the Logan one, okay. which I felt was the strongest of yes. the bunch, Makuga's. And I look at the dislike <laughs> to like ratio, and I just go, oh, no. Oh, no. And I I was broken. Yeah. I was beyond angry. Did you cry? Angry. No, I was, I was I'm done with all of this. Yeah. Oh, really? you were ready to quit? I'm done with all this. Because really? it wasn't just that people didn't find it funny. I can live with that. Yeah. I'm a stand-up comic. I bombed. I've killed at the improv. That's, that's different, though. Yeah, I've killed at the improv, yeah. and the next night at room five, ten people thought I was the stupidest human being alive, right? right? I've done bad jokes on stage. I've been in groundling sketches that were great. I've been in groundling sketches that were horrible. But the difference with both those things you just said there mm-hmm. is that you can recover the next night. Yeah. This thing lives on this there, lives. and it's not recovering. And it's not recovering, and it's not recovering. In mine, I think I had a reference to what what 80s teen comedy as the guy who's, I've got, oh, I've got a girlfriend, she lives in Canada. Right. I had a reference in that with my character, made a reference to it. Yeah. And someone tweeted me, I'll never forget, how dare you make fun of nerdy people that can't get women? And I wrote back to them, uh, I am a nerdy guy who can't get women historically. That's a reference to a movie. You're an idiot. Like, you're dumb. Right. You are a dumb person. I'm getting mad now. Right. You're a dumb person. You don't get comedy. You wrote that back to them? No, I didn't oh, write that okay. part. Because I'm trying to be somewhat... I'm also representing a company, right? Yeah, you got to yeah. be somewhat careful. Tell that to some other people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was so... I was angry, and then I tweeted out something unrelated like a day or late, later. Yeah. Some other joke about food. I don't know. And someone wrote, this tweet was funnier than everything in, in Captain Learning. And I wrote back to that person. I wrote Captain Learning, and that's the funniest thing I've ever written in my career. Because right. they thought they were like patting me on the back. Like, that was, Ken, you're really funny. Right. Unlike that other stuff. You that, should be writing that, Captain that, Learning. You should be writing right. Captain Learning. And right. it was like, go fuck yourself. Right. Go fuck yourself. Right. Who the fuck do you think you are? None of you. It was, but remember the one night I lost it on stage? You were there when I was hosting, and I had a bad night. And I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm and sure. I was at room five, and I, I went off stage, and I was like, I went off on, on stage. I was like, you know what sucks about stand up comedy? I am funnier than every one of you people in the that. audience. Yeah, yeah, I, I am that. funnier yes, than yes. you'll ever be. Yeah. Uh, you guys think you're funny at the office. You're not. You're not. Yeah, definitely there for this. But the problem with stand up comedy is I come up here and have a bad night for 1,000 different reasons. You all think I'm not funny, and I'm more funny than you'll ever be. And that was the it tapped into that anger where I was like, got to go laugh that stuff though too that, that night. Didn't it? it did, yeah, and the yeah, crowd yeah. T- and the, and so, but a live audience right. was able to turn around. Internet, which is already tough, and right. I, I don't I don't read the and comments. Texts don't translate. <laughs> text messages do not translate. Yeah. Uh, text tone confusion is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it should be a certifiable problem. So it broke me. So I went through anger. Then I went sad. Then it was like, well, what could we have done better? And then there was talk about, well, let's dig in our heels and keep doing it. And that might not have been a bad 
thing to do. To Fernandez's credit, Fernandez wanted to keep he's going. He's a big with fan it. of him. He's he, still a fan. He of him. is, and he, he he loved it. Really wanted to keep pushing it. The problem was that what I thought was um, with because I, you know me, I mm-hmm. loved that series, and I think yeah. that it's just that I don't think I still I think that the there was an audience that understood exactly what. You There's were going fans for. of it is absolutely they know exactly what you're going for. I still because I don't buy like people are like I got it. I just didn't think it was funny. I don't really think they got it. Mm-hmm. I don't understand they they think the the parody part of it, mm-hmm. the jokes behind it. Because if you look at it, a comedic, it, I agree with you. I think it's some I've known. I've read a lot of your stuff too. A lot mm-hmm. of really funny stuff. You tapped in, yeah, and you really went to some. But it was it just really pissed people off. It was, and, and that's sometimes the, state, the nature of channels and the nature of YouTube brands. Uh, I've I've been there at Screen Junkies when you've tried to do something a little different. Yeah. People don't like it. It's it's a weird thing. I get it, and that's kind of the nature of it. It's if if you're known, you know, if 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 you listen to the Knapsack Files, like I, I do my character that uh, Dutch Allen that we started on Schmoes, the Go Picture guy. Oh yeah. Now every once in a while I do a full forty five minute show on that character. It really? and it's one of my favorite things. Yeah. I, I've, I've dabbled. It's and on it, Patreon? Uh, uh, no, no, it's on. It's on the file, and, and pretty soon it's going to be. I'm going to do it live on YouTube, just okay. in my house. Cool. I have the whole thing, and I love it. It's just dressing a, up, dressing up, that's whole cool. thing. Uh, that's the go picture guy, and it's fun. And we're doing that. I'm going to do that. It's not for everybody. I understand. Yeah. So if you go to the Knapsack Files to get like, uh, I'm Ken, and I'm talking about depression, and uh, here we're here with Christian Carla talking about marriage, and then on Saturday I'm like, well, anyways, me and Bob Downey Jr. Are coming in here. I understand you might be like, what's going on? I think that's different. Though. Here, I'll tell but, you. but it's the same ballpark, but this yeah. one to another level. It was like, what's this? Well, it's because I think the difference is that because the La La Land sketch, mm-hmm. anything we did comedy-wise yeah. didn't hit. Because And mm-hmm. look, perfect example is Collider, it didn't hit, but yeah. Collider Live, right? Yeah, right? So I'm still getting comments. There, there are more people that understand it than, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than the people who don't. But of, why aren't you talking about movies? Because right, that's right, not right. what this show is. Right. Clyde Live is not about that. Um, the comedy stuff we were doing, even though was a lot of it was kind of movie movie related, mm-hmm. it was more about comedy. And I think that the audience is there subscribed mm-hmm. for movie content, right? Or, yeah, yeah. And that threw them off, and that's why they either wouldn't watch it or why they mm-hmm. would downvote it. And it's essentially why Clyde Quick was born. Yeah, yeah. Um, and why, like, something if Captain Learning came up today, it would be put on Probably over. I different. still think we should put the episodes of of Learning up on Quick. I think you should. Yeah, and, and I and I get it. In order to dial back my anger towards anyone listening who might not have liked it, um, it hits a nerve with me clearly. But also, I get it. If you're subscribed to Collider because you want to watch movie talk and you want to hear about Batman, that's not uh, that's not a bad thing. I want you to subscribe to us. Right. I think Ellis does a great job with movie talk. You should watch it. You should watch Collider. Live. You should watch uh, Mailbag. You but. If you're a fan of these creators, it's like in music, too. You're a music fan, too. It's yeah. like I'm a big fan of Ryan Adams, you know, and he started out on the country, uh, you know, whiskey-tinged rock, and then occasionally he's done a heavy metal yeah. album. He's done that. It's like I, I'm i invested in, in him as an artist. I want to see where this goes. Uh, maybe I don't I don't like his right. heavy metal stuff as much as the, like the, the Heartbreaker album or whatever, but, like, I respect him to see where he wants to go. Yeah. We're not all in one lane. This idea that 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 you know um, you can't have opinions outside of entertainment. Like we're human beings. In right. fact, more often insightful than others. That's why. So yeah, that's what this the Croy's making me burp. It's a, um, yeah, it's the best. Uh, so I get it if you're like, what is this? Yeah. But then just let it, <laughs> just yeah, let it go. Let the, it happen. Yeah, and also, also, and if. I never, and I think this is always something. If I, don't, if you don't like something, it's just a matter of a presentation on either, two, two things. Yeah. Again, back to social media. It's either a don't say anything at all, right, right. or b say, hey, listen, I'm so I'm Ken. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan I'm, because I think you would have responded this better. Ken, I'm a big fan of your work. Mm-hmm. Sorry, but Captain Learning it didn't land for me. But I can't wait to see what you do. And next. I will say there was a couple of people that did, yeah. and and that's fine. That's fine. Again, I get humor not hitting yeah. everywhere. Uh, I'm a big Dennis Miller fan. I know. Different. That's a little different nowadays. But back weekend update. I loved him on Monday Night Football. I'd right. laugh every week. You know that right. was, uh, Tom he Brady's was throwing that yeah. pass like he's in the War of 1812, and I'm over here like, ha ha. Right. I had friends at work who were like that guy is dumb, and I'm yeah. like, well, you don't know history, but I understand it didn't work. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but anyways, different the, audience, different audience. Yeah. Um, but we have to reach all audiences. That's a goal. It was very. Spe- but all that to say, all that to say, it broke me. Yeah, I wanted out of the space. Okay, so so take me through that then. So you you're in you're in Vegas. It kicks your ass. You get back mm-hmm. because I knew that you were bummed about it, but yeah. I didn't see you broken. 
I see. It gets back to that. It thing was internal. Of not, yeah, I can't. I can keep up a face. So what's broken then? What is it? I'm I'm out. I'm going to quit. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go back to my 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 other job. What? what uh, no, what not just that. Other than that is like other than talking Star Wars because I'm always going to do that. Yeah, I'm always going to do that. Even no matter how toxic or non toxic the times are, I love Star Wars. I'm going to talk that. I'm going to talk Game of Thrones. Um, it it just. I, I came back and it's like cool. What's left? And we we were talking about maybe still doing them. It's like well, what's left? Um, am I going to just talk about Batman on movie talk? Am I right. just going to trailer react to Mamma Mia fucking two right. with Makuga? No. What's left? I want to do something creative. I want to do outside of this because then on the other side, and you don't listen to all the haters, but his other side are like pe- people. I don't think they realize. You worked in development. Uh, I, I you know, did sketch comedy and stand up. I currently have an animated show in development at an animation house. Right. We're creators, and this digital media space opened up. But sometimes people think we're still the hey guys in a room, and those people have their own sets of skills. I was always impressed watching Jeremy Johns do his little monologues. Yeah. I couldn't do what Jeremy Johns did. That's right. a skill. So, but. I would always be like, hey, I'm not just here to do a trailer reaction. I moved to this town 20 years ago. We kind of fell into it. We I mean, fell into it. I feel the same way. Because two dopes I knew started reviewing movies under the name Schmoes. No. And we, we, look, we found our way into this thing because people ask me all the time, like, why don't you do movie talk anymore? It's, right. You want some more? Oh, no, no. I just I picked up the, I'm going to put yeah, it in put the Put it in the glass. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I just, I just don't have fun doing it anymore you know yeah, and it's yeah. not and it's nothing against the show the show the show yeah. itself is is great and and they and they they cover all the stuff inside movie yeah. news too i like to do more stuff i like more conversational stuff i like this i like yeah, to yeah. do yeah. a lot of life stuff i want to you know there's other things that i wrote there's stuff with the schmo down there's more stuff i want to do creating mm-hmm. wise and that's the stuff that i think that we want to keep continually doing yeah so you then, at that point, that was, I don't want to say beginning of the, well, I guess it, it was, was the kind beginning of the beginning of the end, of the end because then, yeah. then, then I'm not showing up to work happy. Right. Then I might as well go back to work at a mall because I'm not feeling creatively. You uh, got grouchy. It's, I got grouchy. Yeah. Oh, I was very grouchy. Yeah, you got grouchy. Um, and, and the next thing, one of the next things we try to do, uh, I, I kept saying I want to do, one of the first things I pitched when I got here was a f- five-minute Collider Docs. Do five minutes. But I wanted to be more serious. Yeah. Like, let's talk about the throne room scene in Return of the Jedi. And let's sit down with talking heads and talk about what that scene meant to you. Maybe it's ten minutes. Maybe it's five. At some point, again, let's do the parody version. Uh, you get in a writer's room. You spin it around. Next thing you know, makuka has got a great idea. Riley's got a great idea. And um, I knew I loved one of my favorite things ever produced out of this world is the 30 or 30 on Josh uh, Tapia, JT. Oh, the JT, yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, Cobster, Christian Rivacabla, and Cody Hall have a great skill in producing fake documentaries. Yeah. I really think they do. And so we decided. And they did a good job with the Thanos one. The Thanos one. Yeah. So let's do. Uh, I forget how the concept of the super of Henry Cavill's mustache came. Uh, I don't remember how that came about, but I just it was like, and I was like, yes, yes, this is the next thing to get me excited. And that one was met more positively. Yeah, but, almost hundred thousand views. Yeah, but over the course of time. But it's yeah. like, eh, and then it kind of it, it was just like uh, I don't know. They, it wasn't. It didn't, by this time, I'm I'm out. I yeah. got both feet out. And, and it's like I, a smelling salt, but we want to. Yeah, you pass that anyway. Yeah, it's like a, you know, it's like when a team, baseball team, gets a run in the seventh inning when they're down by six, but you yeah. know they're still going to lose the game. Right. Um, I'm like, yay, okay. So by then it was already, yeah, it was kind of the beginning of the end. Mr. Captain Learning killed me. Right. Okay. So that that was the one that really broke your spirit. Yeah. And then I remember the conversation that we had with you because I because I remember you and I. I mean, this is a pretty candid conversation. It's yeah. fine. Like we. I saw that mm-hmm, in you, and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we've had this conversation where I saw you kind of getting right. you were you were tapped out, you were mm-hmm. grouchy. Yeah. Um, you there was you just you, whether you couple it with the fact, like you said, you didn't want to you didn't want a boss, you didn't want to kind of take the yeah. orders. You were bummed with the work in general. You yeah. wanted more, and it, it started to show. And, and yeah. I think we had maybe four or five separate conversations in my office because, yeah. like, you've always you're my guy. Like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you've been like yeah, you bring me and you brought me over, yeah. But it's not just that; it's just that you're you're my friend. I don't know like, why, but yeah. <laughs> because we because the thing is, I've always it's, it's the talent wise, it's the fact sure, that we sure. can have we have conversations like this off air, right, right, yeah. And and we've always been able to do that. So for you, it was always like, well, what can I do to say? Let's fucking take the let's let's yeah, get yeah. you back there. And it just seemed that at a point there was nothing left to do. You had you you knew I was you were done. I wish I knew more specifically, but also it's a fear because it's a job. Yeah, I have health benefits. Right. Um, and I was making you know a, a good salary. Yeah. Thank God because of Verizon Go ninety. Right. right. 
Oh, it's, it's tough. It's tough. I, I, I stayed in a, a job for 17 years because I didn't want to take a chance at times because it's that great scene from Up in the Air when George Clooney uh, and, and Anna Kendrick are firing J.K. JK Simmons, and he asks, what, what, was, what was the amount? What was the amount of money they gave you to give up on your dreams? At some point, that happened to me in the mall. I right. thought, oh, this is it. And the, you know, I've told the story before. The day I officially quit to join Screen Junkies, I was offered a job that was $30,000 more than I was going to make at Screen mm. Junkies. I decided this time I'm taking the, the Screen Junkies right. risk. Uh, and I'm glad I did. So what ended up happening is so you're locked. So you want to make a change, but you're locked. You're yeah. locked into something. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's this and that. So, yeah, I, yeah, I have no problem t- telling you. You pulled me in a lot. And like, how could let's take, let's remember 2011 and 12, we talked about taking over the world. How, yeah. Let's take over the world. And I'm like, I can't hate the world. Yeah. <laughs> and I wish I knew more then to be like, I'm out. I always used to tell some employees, but even ones that I had to fire, you want to write your own ticket. You want to be in control of your destiny as best you can. You don't want me telling you your job's over. Right. You make it, if you're so miserable, make it make that change. That's tough. And sometimes you can. And there's, but Sometimes you need the kick. Sometimes you need the kick. Yeah. And, I, and um, though it was tough... Uh, You're glad you got the kick, though. I'm glad I got the kick. It was tough initially, and I think I was a little uh, grouchy publicly and even privately, where some people don't understand the concept of freelance. Yeah, I literally, I really think some people think we're all in a room every morning. We report to a room somewhere in Hollywood, and uh, there's 40 of us, and then someone comes in with a clipboard and goes, "Ken, you're on Screen Junkies right. today. Jay Washington, you're on Hyper RPG." It's not like that, right. and. So I was a little grumpy because there were some things like, hey, oh, we heard this thing that Ken's no longer at Collider full time. Don't worry. He's going to be a Jedi Cancel. And someone literally tweeted, things are going to be OK. That day I had asked my uncle for money because yeah. I couldn't afford to, to, to live um, to get my, my car fixed and all because, my because of course, your car is going to die the same week. Right. Uh, I had lost this job. And then three weeks later, I lost a part time job I had for something called Anchor. And it was it was a rock bottom point, you know. And and so. When people were like, it's all right, he's on Jedi Council. <laughs> In the back of my head, I'm like, yes, which I love doing. Right. Um, but it, it, I don't have medical insurance. Right. And I'm a car accident away from being, uh, you know, buried in debt for the rest of my life. And so it's a, it was it was that de- that departure. It wasn't that the departure was ugly, but it was like this ripple effect of this wonderful fan base who sometimes thinks they know more on the inside than they do. Oh, trust me, I get it. I know yeah. this whole thing today where I posted about the Schmodown and the, and the, the money that it needs. Yeah. So, well, why don't you just do this? You should just do that. You, you know, it's a, And that, there are helpful suggestions. There's helpful ones, But yeah. then there's other ones that's like, well, this is, is an easy fix. All you need to do is this. It's like, you know, there you, was you some, don't understand. someone on a on a after-show type of podcast who once uh, made a comment of, well, the reason Ken probably can't do that is his contract at Screen Junkies prohibits. I had no contract. I was an at-will employee for right. Defy Media signed to the Screen Junkies brand. You don't know this industry. Right. Like, why you took, It's why I don't go on a lot of wrestling podcasts now, because uh, it's a weird weird industry with a lot of codes and this and that. And it's like, if, you, if you're not even allowed in a locker room, I don't know why you, you, I'm going to listen to you talk about it. Right. Um, um, so yeah, I, so I definitely was grouchy after that too. Yeah, which makes sense, and it, you know, because you get because you get especially like, people in mm-hmm. general. But I, I know you, you, yeah. you, you get into a couple things, and you think that the, the, the you chicken little. You think this, yeah, yeah, this guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm better at that. I'm, yeah. I'm much more zen in a way. Um, Did you get that through uh, through your lady? In your life, yeah, yeah, that talking to some close uh, people, and and but also I've had the time of my life in the last year, uh, and I'll be blunt. I'm living off of unemployment, but I yeah. lost it. I'm living off of credit cards. I took a credit card loan out, and I pay myself. Still, still, yeah, still okay. pay myself every two weeks. I have no health insurance. Taxes are going to screw me, right? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't regret any of that. You seem it's strange because you yeah. seem the happiest you've ever been. Right. Is that um, true? Uh, happiest I've ever been in L.A. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The most content. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The most content. Uh, sixth grade was a good year for me too. Eighth As an grade, adult. Eighth grade. Was As an good. adult. Um, you got a good eighth grade. It. I won two speech tournaments. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I won an air hockey tournament. Yeah. So okay, we, can we hold great. those things? Yeah. Yes, because I was able to uh, work for myself, but also learn again. I'm not like hey, f those collider guys. I was like, oh man, I I didn't use that situation to the best of my ability. You you should learn from your mistakes. Um, and what do I want to do? And I met with and I met with our, our friend Dutch. I met with Dutch. Yeah. And like, what do I do? And uh, what do I do? And and it's all out in front of you. You just got to survive, right? Right. And this was the first. I have been working full time since um, 1998. I lost my radio job. And this is, it's a, it's a weird parallel. Uh, I'm a spiritual guy. In January 1998, I lost my radio job. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a DJ, and I was highly. You know, it was, but it was weird. I, I, my mind wasn't on where I was then. Yoda, I wish Yoda would kick my ass then. Lost my radio job. Was uh, lived off the dole for a little bit. Coached a baseball team. Got a part time job working at a movie theater, and then moved to LA in August, August fifteenth, nineteen ninety eight. January two thousand eighteen. Twenty years later, I lose my job. Right. I've been working full time since then. Since I moved to LA, uh, August two thousand fifteen. Twenty years. To the day I uh, August 2018, 2018, yeah. 20 years to the day I moved to LA, which was a big new chapter in my life. August 15th, 1998. Got it. Uh, August 15th, 2018 to the day something happens I can't yet say. Okay. Um, that's not going to erase my debt, not going to get me a new car, but it's a new chapter of my career. Right. Wow, what a weird parallel. Yeah. And and that only happens in January of 1998 and August of 98 because I lost my job and had time to think about what I want to do next. Um, back then, I was living at home, a little bit different. Now, on my own, for the first time since October 19, 1998 is when I got my full-time job at, at the mall. From then, it's the first time I've not had a job. and first time I've not had a safety net. Right. First time I'm out on my own on a high wire, and you either fall or you get across. Right. And that's been what this last year has been about. So I feel, that's why I feel that's good. what I'm saying. Because, well, because that you've been forced to really because the thing is that I've always said, and we've, we've talked about this many times together, is that it's not it's not your talent. I mean, people who who know you and people who mm-hmm. y- you you're one of the most talented individuals that I've ever I've ever worked with. It's there's always been, and it's I don't want to say I think sometimes drive, mm-hmm. but I think that it's, yeah, some, no. it's and it's a matter of saying you know it's right there. Mm-hmm. Am I going to grab that? Or am I going to go? No, I'm I'm comfortable right here. Yeah, I'll if I have to grab that, I will. And now yes. you're forced to grab it. Yes. Uh, no, you're not wrong. I, I I've always I heard Will Forte on Mark Marin describe himself as this, and it's funny because you know Will Forte. Will Forte and the connection. Yep. A lot of people when I was at the Groundlings, people were like you remind me of my friend Will who's on yeah. SNL now, and, and then uh, I finally met him at Comic Con 2015. But um, uh, he's once described himself because I've described myself as. Um, Self, like self-loathing and insecure, insecure, and the next level is supreme confidence and arrogance, and the lower deep core is complete abject fear that I am everything I'm not, you know, right. that I'm a failure, and that is a pretty good way to describe a lot of creative types or artists or just even a lot of people in general. I agree, and I think that that's well, it's you. So right now you are you you have these things that are lining up, right, but. Mm-hmm. What do you want to? Because it, it's always that st- stupid question of what do you want to do with yourself? What do you yourself? want to do? What do you want to do with your life? But you know what I mean. It's like I so if you rock. if you were offered a gig, yeah. somewhere else, would you take it at this point, knowing the stuff that you had? Like, yeah. would you maybe? Is it still keeping on freelance? Is it like yeah. what do you what are you trying to accomplish here? What's the ideal gig for you right now? The ideal gig is is. You know, kind of broadcasting, but I like doing it on my own. So it's like, and that's possible now. Would I take a hosting gig? You know, if if the Disney streaming service goes on and they put a casting call out and they want an old guy to come talk Star Wars, yeah. you damn well better believe I want that job. Right. Um, in the past, though, I'd be like, mm, not for me. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a moment. You talk about, see, I, I, you know, like a lot of people uh, moved to L.A. I, want, I wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. That was a dream, playing for the New York Yankees and being a yeah, weekend update right, anchor. Right. Uh, I go to the groundlings where you're supposed to go. Uh, things go well, but I don't put all into it. When I'm not there training, because it takes about four or five years, I should have been doing other things. I didn't. Yeah. I was just like waiting for this to happen. And that ends, and and um, I was like, oh, I guess I can't be on SNL. I was 26. Right. Fuck, 26 years old. And you feel you gave up. Do you uh, give up too quick? I gave up too quick. Yeah. And so in October, because I also don't, I was afraid of traveling. Like, well, what if I have to live in New York? I couldn't do that. Could I be the first SNL cast member to live in Studio City? Right. Um I went to with Screen Junkies. Went to New York Comic Con in October 2015. Dan Merle uh, loves New York, and he took me around New York. I'll be forever grateful for the the evening Dan showed me around New yeah. York as as a tourist. Though so we went to the library, and he's like, "Ah, he's right there." Uh, he goes, "Ah, look at Ghostbusters, right?" And I was like, "I haven't I haven't seen that, Dan." He's like, "God damn." <laughs> he's like, "I was like, we're not going to the firehouse." Um, Dan took me went to Thirty Rock, yeah. and oh, oh, it was wow. on a Friday night. And I know my friend Mikey Day is up there rehearsing because he's the cast of a member of SNL now, and, and we were in the ground league together. And I know, and I'm looking up. I'm at that ice rink and tourists around. It was a cold night in October, and I'm looking up at Thirty Rock, the building, and I cry. I start crying, um, and I cried because I didn't take that chance. Mm. I might have been able to do it. I might have failed in that goal because every, thousands of people fail in that goal to yeah. be on Saturday Night Live. I didn't try. I didn't try. Right. And I remember. That night, October 2015, going, I failed. 
Right. I didn't try. So I don't want to do that again. So I don't necessarily have a I want to, I want to, I want to. I'm doing this thing I'm talking about. It's something I've been wanting to do. But if something's in front of you now, you're, you're running towards, towards it. Towards And not like, I can do that either later or I don't need to run to Or it'll to just that. happen. A lot of times things happen. Look, I got, I got fortunate, you know. I talk about, I met you in 2004, 2005. I met Mark Ellis and became friends with him a little bit later, 2007. I do stand-up. I quit doing stand-up, this and that. You start calling me. Next thing you know, I'm like, take this, uh, you know, helping you out producing the Schmo Show. 2012 is when I started yeah. that. And because of that, that leads to this, that leads to this. Next, you know, I'm out of the job. I wanted to leave the moment I got it in October 2009, uh, right. 1998. So I, I believe I believe you look back and you go, ah, oh, here's what God had planned for you. You look at it along the way. But you have to make some choices along the way and you be more aggressive and uh, fail. Be Not be afraid to fail. Yeah, and, you know, because I don't know how much time we even have. Oh, I'll, I'll look, yeah, yeah. Check, check because uh, I, um, I also wanted to ask you something that you said that I know it's pretty important. What are we at? Yeah. Okay, we're, so we're, this is the last thing I want to talk to you about. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you mentioned, there's two things you mentioned that I definitely want to bring up here. There's a lot of things kind of just going through my life and things I've done with personal issues. Uh-huh. Um, you mentioned kind of depression. Yeah. You know, and I, I haven't, I'm, family members that I, of mine have mm-hmm. gone through it. Um, things mm-hmm. that just in general has been, uh, I've been thinking about a lot more lately, yeah, yeah. right? Something you still deal with? Depression? Not as much. Not as much. And this, 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 that philosophy that you're talking about here, yeah. it's helped a lot. Yeah, not really as much. Has. I can still, I have my days. And Rob Reiner once said in an interview about the making of when Harry met Sally, he's like, that character Billy Crystal plays Harry Burns is very much me. When Nora Ephron was writing it, we're talking about it. He's like, you know, depression is my friend. I'm this, yeah. I remember this interview. He's like, depression is my friend, Rob Reiner. Um, Depression is very comforting, and I, I believe, and I'll say this up top because I never want people to misunderstand me. Never, never want you to misunderstand me. I believe most of the depressions are chemical based. It is a, it's a mental health issue, yeah. and, and those things are often forgotten. We're learning a lot about what that can do. Um, not just, I mean, uh, a lot of incidents of violence. I think are mental health issues. It's that I, I dealt with it. Uh, uh, dealing with some homeless people. Uh, you know, I had to deal with the the reality of the violence they were going through, but right. the truth was why they got there was probably some mental health stuff also, different stuff. So that's important. It, it's depression is a, a, a disease type of situation. I, I do believe, though, you have to make some choices to get out of it, and that's tough. And that's yeah. tough. I, I made some choices, and I say it's like a ping-pong game. Every day, you got to bat something away. The ball's come, The depression ball's coming at you. Right. Do, 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 do. And some days you're going to miss. Like the job, like the one job you're in. You got, yeah. you got rid of it, and that, yeah. that started to help, right? Yeah, it started, yeah, it started to help. Yeah, self-esteem uh, helps. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things. A lot of things help along the way. But you got to believe it. you got to believe it. And, it's not a, and, and so if you don't, and if you fail and i always say it's a it's like like an addict it's it's an addiction too it's an addiction and and, and you gotta look at it like you might feel great on tuesday right. wednesday morning you're gonna wake up and you're gonna feel depressed and i think it's what ha- what what happens i'm not a doctor but what happens when you wake up that morning you're like but i felt so good last night and then i think you start to doubly beat yourself up yeah. then you're depressed about de- being depressed because last night you felt happy and i feel it's at every what's day. wrong with me? what's wrong yeah, with me right. and i think we got to be more honest about it's okay if you wake up on Wednesday and you yeah. feel bad. Is that, and is that how what's helped you kind of yeah. better with it is because you just embrace it, embrace the feeling. M- mileage too, just getting through a lot of yeah. things. No, you'll get out of it. Yeah, just kind of push pushing through. Yeah, and then um, so uh, yeah, so I don't deal with it as much if I'm okay. being honest. And I, I I hate to say that because some people are still dealing with it. Some people, you know, I don't <sighs> think you should hate to say it. I think that that to me might give some people a lot of hope. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. you know, I talk about it as honest as honestly as I can. But there's there's sometimes, um, I know from personal experience when you when that depression is your friend and you don't want to you don't want to stop hanging out with that friend. Right. And I see it sometimes in tweets and other people, and I see it, and it's like, I don't t- I think it's a bad thing, but I'm right. just like, I see it, I see what you're going. You don't want to not hang out with this this right. friend called depression, right. and and you gotta you gotta choose to hang out with new friends. It's not easy, and I don't want anyone. To, to misconstrue what I'm saying. It is not easy. I went through five years of therapy. I was fortunate enough to get to go through. Some people don't get that chance. Um, two suicidal uh, incidents and tendencies and two big things. You know, I had a 45 to my head at one time in 2004. Did you really? Yeah, in February 2004. Loaded 45. Uh, I was working at my friend's uh, foreign exchange business. He were stepped, you clo- you were really, I didn't realize you were that, he you were ste- that close. He stepped out to, for a smoke. And there was a pile of like euros and, yeah. and a loaded forty five because it was that type of business. So you had to be careful who came in. Yeah. It was a one man shop, and I was helping him out after work, my other job, and I drive there. And Are you just, going through a breakup at the time? No, no. Uh, post Groundlings, post. What am I going to okay. do with my life? And just, uh, I guess I'm depressed. This is what I am. 
and not knowing how to fix it. And I saw, I saw, okay. And oh, what what happened is in 2003, I had I had almost jumped off a roof, and drinking or not drinking? No, I didn't have any alcohol till I was like. 2000, no, 2002, I, I think I had a couple okay. of but I wasn't drinking. I wasn't fully in stand-up comedy yet. After right. stand-up's what made you drink. Right. Um, no, I just was one of those incidents, like, let's let's end this, let's do this. And I didn't, and then I had a great year. I recovered. I'm never yeah. going to do that again. Right. And then a year later, found myself in the same spot. So then the depression about being depressed starts kicking in. Yeah. I was more depressed that I was in that spot again than, than being in the spot. And then he walked out, and one of the, I saw the gun there, and I knew it was loaded. I knew the safety he was off, and I put it to my head. And you were. I you, prayed to God, please give me the courage to pull the trigger, and and, and obviously God was like, nah, maybe not today. Right. Um, and then you put it down. Your input. My therapist later on, and then eventually, I think a couple months later, started therapy because uh, I told my friend this, and he was yeah. like, nah, I'm gonna uh, say this to someone. Yeah. Uh, you know, realized uh, my impulse. You told him when he came back in. Uh, well, I told. Well, it was well. So I told that friend later. Okay. And then was like, hey, well, oh, you're back. Guess what I did. Right, but he heard later. So the, I hadn't shot a gun yet then, and he says, "Oh, okay. Tomorrow we're going to the gun range." Right, and he took me out and we fired all the guns. And oh, he was wow. like, "That's what you had to your head, idiot!" Like, right. and I was like, "I was a good shot." He's like, "Yeah, you probably would have been." Like, don't. So I, I was a weird kind of like. We're sorry, and how old were you again? At this I was twenty, twenty-seven. Wow, twenty-seven uh, range. Um, but that was the last time. That was the last time, and but but well, last time to that degree. Yeah. That stuff has gone away. It went into therapy shortly after that. Uh, you just get some mileage. That's why the old hold on for one more day rings true because you, you you're in the forest. The twenties are a horrible decade. It's the I should decade. I should have this. I should have my career. I should have a house. I should have a marriage. In the thirties, you start getting to the I can. And and uh, our friend Miss Kathy told me that, yeah. and it was great. And um, great great advice that I just got now. Um, so the mileage kicks in. I survived that. I've never been to that spot again. Good. But I've been dark and depressed again. Right. Grumpy, grouchy. But you have new philosophies. New on how philosophies to get out of it. in yeah. life. Got it. And I'm a Christian guy. I believe yeah. in God. Yeah. I believe in the baby Jesus, right? And you still like, well, why am I still feeling like this? So you feel guilty about that, too. Right. There's a lot of stigma around it that I think, hope with social media, around the back that we were talking about, people can be more open about this. I agree with you. Listen, so we could probably talk for three hours, you and I. Yeah, and, we talked. And we got to do it again. But I do. One thing I want to do, to be to be fair, I did mm. this with, uh, I've done this with Katie. I did this mm. with uh, Heidi. I did this with Roca. Uh -huh. um, I did not do it with Tom because I didn't know what. The, well, he's Tom. Yeah. Um, because we're almost out of time, but I'm gonna because I've been sitting here grilling you about your life and everything yeah, yeah. too. Uh, I'm gonna let you get two questions in. Two questions. Whatever in? you want. But to, about about you and then yeah that's what I did do. Did you this. date Katie Sackhoff? This is the same thing that that uh, I talked about with her and I talked about <laughs> with with Roca because Roca asked me the same fucking thing. Uh, I, the answer is yes. We uh, talked about it on the air already. You actually first mentioned it on the Knapsack Files. I did mention it on the Knapsack. Uh, Files. Anyways, that's a joke. That's I know a joke. Um, yeah. Um, I want to know uh, when it comes to the Schmodown, your your passion. The, the sometimes your passion will burn you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you, are there days that you don't think it's it can go on, but you you go on because of X Y Z? Well, I mean, yeah, shit. Today, um, it's it's not because of the creative involved in it. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the things happening. It's because it's it's that depressing feeling like you were talking about. Like I know what it is. Like someone again, someone wrote today. Right. It's like, well, maybe it's because movie trivia is is too cliche or is, <laughs> or is too niche. Right, 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 right. And I was like, no, it's it's, it's not no. it. It's no. like it. I don't have a marketing budget for it. I don't right. have a sales budget for it. I have two writers, really one who's got right. a little bit of help here. School. I have two editors, right? Mm -hmm. I have. I don't really have a production team. I have a team. I have Collider's team. Right, right. That'll, that that's the deal I get to do here on Friday. Right. Um, and I don't get any advertising if it goes on there. All I'm paying out of my pocket through the Patreon. Right. That's right. what I need to. So. Again, what I need on the Patreon, or, or not just Patreon, but for a budget, like the thing operates right now between like twelve thousand dollars right, right. is what it does monthly. Right. That goes the day I get it. Yeah, for everyone I got to pay and everything, it's gone. Right. Ellis and I see nothing. Mm -hmm. Realistically, if you want to, like people are like this should be on TV, this should be on tour, this should be doing that. Yeah. I did the budget. It would cost me about one point four million dollars a year, which <laughs> yeah. is about a hundred thousand dollars or so a month. Right, which is attainable because. It, Again, let's say the 50,000 or 100,000 people that watch the matches, mm -hmm. if they put a dollar in, just if I, if I charge the dollar. Sure, sure, yeah. And what frustrates me about it is, because not everybody can afford to put money in. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. what frustrates me about it is, too, I know what the product is. I know yeah. what we put in there. And I know it's worth a dollar. 
mm-hmm. a month. I know right. it is. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I know that it should be making $100,000 a month and what I can do with it, mm-hmm. what we could do going on the road, these things that we'd be able to do, the production I could put into it, the sketches that I could do with, with mm-hmm. the, the overall production in general, the st- another like a side studio I could do, the, bring it back inside. All these things I could do, right. but I can't. So that's where I get frustrated with it because, oh, I can do No, I can't do that. Right, right. Oh, what if I could do this? I don't have the much to do. Oh, oh, wait, what, can I work on that? No, I can't. I'm working on mm-hmm. something else. For, mm-hmm. it, so that's frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating because you get a lot of like, why isn't so-and-so on the desk? Well, I can't afford to pay can't them. Afford. And if I can't pay them, yeah. uh, it's it's to the point now in our careers, uh, this industry where you, you, you know, Pay is pay is that, important. That's it, all, it, it's yeah. the it's the economy of this. Yeah, all right, that's a fair answer. Uh, do you ever regret? And regret's a weird thing because it leads. You know, you can, you look now, but do you ever regret leaving stand up comedy? Um. Yes and no. I think uh, I don't regret leaving it because mm-hmm. I found my medium in regards to being able to talk to an audience and be right. Able to, um, I thought thought about it last night. Actually, it's funny mm-hmm. you say that because we were we were talking about it on live doing a collider stand-up comedy right, tour, right. right? And when getting back up there, like, and I thought about it, my, my my thought in my head was, if I went up in front of a crowd, like, because, and I never had, when I was doing stand-up, I, you, you know, remember, I could go up in front, I went up in front, I think it was two or 3,000 people when mm-hmm. I was doing colleges, right? Yeah. They didn't know who I was, they just right, right. was a comedian, who, and I did well. Yeah. And I, and I could do that in a room that didn't know me, and I could go into a room of the improv of 200 people, I could do right. well. I never got the chance to go up in front of a room that knew me. Right. Never got to go up in front of a collider crowd or a schmoes crowd. Like right, right. I, I not not jealous, but I, I'm 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 jealous of Roca. No. But I'm glad that Ellis gets to yeah. go up in front of a crowd. Like he'll go to crowd and, and like I asked him was there were there schmoes or collider fans there? He's like, Yeah, there are a bunch. Like yeah. and I, I like I wanted that. It's yeah. not that I don't want him to have that. Of course I want him to have that. Right, but right, like right. I wanted to be able to do that a couple of times to have that audience. So I wonder because even if I didn't do well the first time, I know if you put me on stage ten times mm-hmm. in the next year, one of those sets I'll have a really great set. I might have ten great sets. Right, right. But I'll get that feeling again. I just don't know if I want to get the drug in my system again. Well, yeah, with a with a family that's tough. I don't know that's how comics problem. with families do it. Yeah. It's, it it's the partners. Are, yeah. are, are a lot of a lot of kudos to them for allowing that to happen. Yeah. It's tough. All right, those are the two questions because <laughs> we can we can do more stuff too. I got a Ken's got to get out of here. I got to get out of yeah. here. But um, one on one, that was it. Me and Ken Knapsack. We'll do some more. Um, thank you for being you, being open and honest. And and again, like we talked about, Ken is also doing. He's got a Patreon. Yeah. Um, and is it just at Ken Knapsack? Or just... uh, it's actually the Knapsack Files. I've thought about it's just the Knapsack Files. Okay, yeah, so yeah. just you look for Ken. And, and once again, he's got some great stuff on there too. He's doing a lot right. of content. So check him out. Go to his Patreon. Make sure you join over there and check out his show, The Afternoons with uh, with with him and Josh McCuga. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things that he's working on. You got Force Center. I mean, he's got. You can yeah. find Ken all over the place. Yeah, and hopefully some some stuff coming soon. I can yeah. tell you all about yeah. Well, let's talk about it. Thank you, my yep. man. You're my brother. I love you. Love and um, we'll talk to you guys next time. Ah, LaCroix is great. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it subscribe it do all that stuff hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows and we will continue to make more of them you can find all your favorite shows from collider on itunes on the collider podcast network thank you very much see you next time